Hi, Vadim's here, and in this quick tutorial, we'll break things down step by step so you can follow along and succeed. In this tutorial, you'll learn the most essential Microsoft Excel features and functions used in the day-to-day -day work of the business professional. We'll cover XLOOKUP and VLOOKUP, powerful lookup functions for finding and returning data, pivot tables, which summarize and analyze data with ease, AI tool in Excel, including automation and insights, chat GPT integration and how to use AI to boost your productivity. Whether you're a business analyst, manager or a data-driven professional, this tutorial is designed to upgrade your Excel skills fast. All of this and more coming up on online training for everyone. In many everyday workflows, you'll need to know how to do more in Excel but without spending hours googling formulas or clicking through tutorial videos. Whether you're managing budget, running payroll or tracking performance, Excel is very powerful, but sometimes overwhelming, especially if you're not a formula expert. This is where ChatGPT comes in. Think of it like your personal Excel assistant. You type in the query and you get the answer. ChatGPT is always ready, never tired and always up for solving a spreadsheet headache. Let's walk through a real world example. Imagine that you're in charge of tracking pay for a small team. You've got a list of employees, their hours worked, and hourly rates. You want to automatically add $100 bonus for anyone who worked over 40 hours. It's a common productivity challenge and perfect job for ChatGPT. Well, the cool thing, you don't have to know Excel formulas, you just have to describe what you want. Let's start by asking ChatGPT. Write an Excel formula that gives a $100 bonus if someone works more than 40 hours. ChatGPT quickly gave us answer. It used IF formula, and if A1 is greater than 40, return 100, otherwise return 0. Let's try this formula in our spreadsheet. Obviously, we would need to change the A1 to B2, because this is where hours worked are located. If B2 is greater than 40, return 100, or otherwise return 0. Obviously, Excel returned 0 because Alice worked exactly 40 hours. But what if we expand this formula? Let's just drag it across the entire team you see that Charlie and Edward got a $100 bonus. But what if the formula doesn't work the way you expect it? Or what if you're not sure how it works at all? You can copy the formula back to ChatGPT and ask, can you explain this to me? Let's copy the formula from Excel and paste it into ChatGPT. You can also add, explain it to me in two sentences. So the response is not very verbose. And here's what ChatGPT returned. This Excel formula checks if value in cell B2 is greater than 40. If it is, the formula returns 100. If not, it returns 0. And that's some real-time problem solving. You just leveled up your spreadsheet without googling anything. In many everyday workflows, you'll need to know how to quickly find and retrieve information from a table of data. Let's say you're retrieving a sales report and you want to know how much revenue Emily brought in. Instead of scrolling, let's use a lookup formula to fetch it instantly. Let's start with VLOOKUP. We'll navigate to formulas and an insert function. We'll find VLOOKUP on the list. For the lookup value, we'll use Emily. For table array, we'll select A2 through C10. For the index column, we'll use 3 because revenue is located in column C. And for the range lookup, we'll enter false. This ensures the exact match. As you can see, VLOOKUP retrieved the correct value from the cell C2. What's the challenge with VLOOKUP? If you insert any columns between A and C, the formula will break, and it cannot search to the left. This is why most people now prefer XLOOKUP. Let's try this cleaner formula. Let's click Insert function and type XLOOKUP. For the lookup value, we'll use Emily. For the lookup array, we'll use A2 through A10. And for the return array, we'll use C2 through C10. The formula returned exactly the same value. But when it looks for Emily and pulls revenue, it does it without the column count or direction limit. What's cool about XLOOKUP? We can do it the other way too. Let's search by region and find the name. In this version of XLOOKUP, we'll look for region west, and our lookup array will be B2 through B10, and the return array will be A2 through A10. As you can see, it correctly found Jake because it matches the west region. And keep in mind that now we are returning a salesperson based on their region, which is something that VLOOKUP cannot do. What if the name isn't on the list? Can we add an error message to alarm us? Let's try it with XLOOKUP. We'll search for SAM, and the lookup array will be A2 through A10, and the return array will be C2 through C10. 
and if data not found will return an error message not found. As you can see data for Sam is not found because Sam is not in the list. And what's cool about this that instead of messy error you get a friendly message. This is perfect for client facing reports or student templates. And finally let's say that you are in HR and you want to find an employee by employee ID. Believe it or not but we can do it with XLOOKUP as well. For the lookup value let's type 1002. For the lookup array let's type D2 through D10 and for the return array let's type A2 through A10. Now we're using ID to pull back a name which is useful in data mergers, automation or validation forms. Very often professionals face the challenge of summarizing large data sets quickly and accurately. Let's say you handed a messy looking sales report, dozens of rows, different products, dates, regions. Your job? Turn it into a clean summary and do it fast. This is where pivot tables shine. Let's take a close look at this report. The columns show data for salesperson, region, product, customer type, order date, units sold and revenue. Some salespeople have multiple records. For example, Emily has two records, both for East region, but she made two sales of laptop and the monitor. There are a couple important considerations before we convert this data set into a pivot table. Every column should have a clear header, which is true in our case. There shouldn't be any merged cells, there shouldn't be any empty rows, and dates must be in a valid Excel date format. In our data set everything checks, so we're ready to go. Let's click on any cell in our data set and click insert and then pivot table. We'll select new worksheet and click OK. Our data is still in the sales data tab, but Excel created a new sheet where we can summarize the data. Here you can see all the column headers from our original data set. Let's first summarize the revenue by region. To do this let's drag the region into rows and then let's drag revenue into values. And if you look closely on the left you've got total revenue by region in seconds. Now let's break it down further by product. To do this let's drag product below region in the rows pane. Now we have a nested view. You see how each product performed in each region. Now let's compare sales across time. To do this let's add order date to the rows. Now you see revenue trend over time, which is ideal for monthly reports. Now let's segment the data by customer type. Remember in the original data we had retail and wholesale customer type. To do the segmentation let's drag customer type into filters. And now you see additional filter has been added on the top. And we can select between retail and wholesale, as well as choose both of them. Do you want to determine total units sold by a salesperson? No problem. Let's clear all the fields. To do this let's select the field and click remove field. And now starting fresh we need to drag salesperson into rows and units sold into values. Now you can see who is driving performance. And if you add product to columns suddenly you've got cross tab summary of units sold per product and per person. The summary might help you determine who is selling better and which product which might help in cross knowledge sharing or specialization. A lot of times you need to manage inventory whether it's office supplies, classroom gear or small business stock. Microsoft Excel makes it easy to create smart inventory list which makes it more than just a table. Let me show you how to build an inventory tracker using the most useful Excel features to stay organized, efficient and ready to reorder when needed. The essential columns for inventory management are item ID, item name, category, quantity in stock, reorder level, unit price, supplier, total value and stock status. Once you created an initial list let's turn this data into structured Excel table. This enables filters and automatic formatting. To accomplish this select all the data, go to insert tab and click table. In the next step let's format the prices to show them as currency. To do this select column F and click the dollar sign. Do the same thing for column H. Right now the total value is just the fixed price which we entered as part of data entry. Let's change it into formula to calculate the value for each item by multiplying quantity in stock by unit price. In column H2 let's enter formula D2 multiplied by F2. The value is the same but it is calculated value now. So every time we make an update in stock or unit price it will recalculate the total value. And don't forget to expand the formula to other rows. This way recalculation would be real time for all the items. To flag items that need restocking use conditional formatting with the formula that compares stock to the reorder level. Select your table, home, conditional formatting, select new rule, use formula and enter D2 is less than E2 and choose red fill. 
35 was highlighted since it's less than 45 which is the reorder level. Another way to highlight items that need reorder is to show low stack. Right now the stack is just the text. Let's add a calculated formula to select either stack. Let's use the stack status column to label each item as in stack or low stack. To accomplish this, all we need to do is to compare D2 and E2. You can also sum up the total value column to see the overall worth of your inventory. Let's put the cursor into H7 and click the sum button. And obviously you can use table filters to sort or filter by supplier, category or status. This is perfect for making quick reorder lists or reports. A lot of times during the test, you might be asked how to look up data from another sheet in Microsoft Excel. Even if you don't remember all of them, you can bring up just one. VLOOKUP, INDEX AND MATCH, XLOOKUP, NAMED RANGES, INDIRECT, CELL REFERENCE, OR MANUAL LINKING. Let's look at each one of these ways in more details. The free sample file, which you can download using link in the description and comments, contains two tabs, products and product details. Products tab has product ID with product ID given, as well as product name and price where we need to look up the data from another sheet. Product details tab has matching product ID, as well as product name, category, price, stock quantity and supplier data. Let's start with VLOOKUP, which is one of the most popular ways to looking up the data in Excel. Here's VLOOKUP to get product name. To get the price, we use the same structure. To find product name and price for P008, we just need to extend the formula. VLOOKUP works fine, but it's limited. What if your lookup column isn't the first one, or you need more control? That's where index and match come in. First, let's look match to find the row number where ID appears. The row detected is 5, which matches the product details row. Then index uses the row number to return the value. To get the product name, we use following index formula. And for the price, we change the column and we can extend the calculations to product ID P008. Index and match gives you full control over where you're pulling from. No need to rearrange your data. If you're using Excel 365 or Excel 2021 and above, XLOOKUP is the easiest and most powerful option. Instead of counting columns like in VLOOKUP, you just point to the lookup column in the return column. To get the product name, we use this XLOOKUP formula. And to get the price, just switch the return column. Do you want your formula to be easier to read and write? Let's use name ranges. In the product details sheet, we can name the range A to D as product table. Then we go back to the products sheet and use VLOOKUP formula for product name. And here's the version for the price as well. Named ranges make your formulas cleaner to help reduce errors in the large workbooks. Sometimes you need to build a reference from the text. For example, if the sheet name might change. This is where indirect comes in. If you type product details in a cell like A5, you can dynamically pull values from that sheet. To get the product name, let's use indirect formula and look up the value in the cell B5 in product details tab. And we can do similar lookup for the price. Approach with indirect formula is helpful for templates or dashboards that need to switch between sheets without rewriting formulas. Sometimes the simplest method is the best. If you only need one or two values from another sheet, just use direct cell reference. For example, we can use product details B5 to pull product name and product details D5 to pull the price. And finally, the quickest way to link the data between sheets is just to click. Type equal in the cell, navigate to product details tab and click on the cell you want, say product name or price. Press enter and Excel creates the reference for you. It is perfect for quick checks or when you're building something on the fly. A lot of times, as part of Excel test, you might be asked how to remove duplicates in Microsoft Excel. To help you answer this question, I'll offer you multiple different ways. We will look at Remove Duplicates button in the Data tab, highlighting duplicates with conditional formatting, Advanced Filter to extract unique values, using formulas like count if to flag duplicates, Pivot Tables to display only unique entries, Power Query for cleaning large datasets, and using Unique Function in Microsoft Office 365. There are three duplicate pairs in this dataset, HP LaserJet Printer, Dell Monitor 24-inch, and Microsoft Office 365 subscription. One of the easiest way to remove duplicates in Excel is with the Remove Duplicates button. Just select your data, go to the Data tab, and select Remove Duplicates. Choose which column to check, hit OK, and Excel takes care of the rest. Clean and simple. 
If you just want to spot duplicates without deleting anything, try conditional formatting. Select your range, go to Home Conditional Formatting and choose Highlight Duplicate Values. It will color any duplicates so you can review them before making changes. If you would like to pull out just the unique values, you need to use the Advanced Filter tool. You'll find it in the Data tab under Sort and Filter and go to Advanced. Choose to copy only the unique records to another spot. Great if you want to clean version without messing with the original. You can also use formulas to check for duplicates. For example, try count if to flag rows that appear more than once. Or use little logic with if to label values as duplicates or unique. Super helpful for more customized setups. If you're working with the large data set, a pivot table can help. Just insert a pivot table and drag your column into the rows area. It automatically shows just the unique items. Perfect for quick summaries and spotting duplicates by omission. If you're using Power Query, you've got even more control. Select your data, go to Data from Table and Range, and inside the Power Query editor, you can easily remove duplicates with just a click. It's a great for larger files or when you want to build a repeatable workflow. And if you're using Office 365, there is a unique function. Just type Unique, select the range, and Excel will return dynamic list of distinct values. It updates automatically when your data changes. No clicks required. If you found this content helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to online training for everyone. Have a great day.